again. Another week. DTGD Radio. This is episode 797. For May 27th, 2024. You on the show this week, we got the worm bat. Hey, yes, sir. We got turned. What up? We got video games. We got them. Maybe. We do got them. <laughs> that, I was waiting to, waiting to see if video games actually said anything, and they didn't. <laughs> Poor video games. I'm telling you, yep. man. I mean, they're all worthless anyway. They're all six out of tens. You're not wrong. Unless you're Pretty Roblox or Fortnite, nobody cares. Correct. Man, Fortnite. Oh, God. I see people celebrating that Furiosa didn't make any money at the box office. Man, you know, I saw that uh, just now, this morning, actually, on uh, on Twix, and I was like, because they was like giving fucking Zack Snyder credit of all fucking people. It was like, yeah, Snyder, Snyder fans boycotts worked again. I'm like, what the fuck? Y'all evoke this nigga's name when it ain't got shit to do with him. He ain't got no dog in this race. Like, what? What does it have to do with Zack what? Snyder fans? Why are people glad that it's doing badly? I, I thought I heard that it was good. It is good, but it's not making money. But that's not, you know, that... that people are happy people about it. Happy about be- that, yeah, well, people are know. happy about it because WB, you know, is the publishing house and, you know, Zack Snyder and, you know, all that stuff. Oh, you know what? That's what it is. It's because of the, what is it, the wokeness or whatever? Because, you know, this has, the franchise has now moved away from Mad Max being, you know, a guy. And now it's focusing on a woman. So it's that same old thing. So they're like, oh, see, that's why it's not making money. It's it's that type of shit. Well, it's I, not I even just... called Mad Max, right? Mm-mm. It, no. It's, yeah, Furiosa, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so, like, it, it, if it was a Mad Max movie, then it would be about Mad Max. But it's not. Called Mad Max. Man, you know well, that that don't matter to these people. But... <laughs> I was about to say, not one bit. That, ain't, that don't that don't stop the grift. No, I know, but it's still like, I mean, if they called it Mad Max, then I, I could I could see a little bit, but no, no, no. Well, and that's what the last one. I don't know if y'all saw it, but he wasn't. Yeah, Fury he, Road he called Mad Max. Yeah, but like he. He was the he was a co star <laughs> for real. Yeah, I know. Like, I watched it. Kind of it. along the ride, but that movie was fucking awesome. Like, and I'm going to watch this one because Mad Max was good. Like, it'd I, have been I it'd have been funnier if the the last movie he was a co star and they brought back Mel Gibson and just kind of shit on him the whole movie. <laughs> that that would have actually like you're not important enough to be the star. So anyway, video games. There's so many of them, I didn't even get to the Paper Mario this week. Oh. I just I sitting, that one. Yeah, just sitting on my Switch. I, I didn't even boot it up. I'm not even sure if I downloaded it. I think I did, but maybe I didn't. But, uh, we'll kick it off with you, Terrence. What you, show us what you got. Okay. Um, I'm, what time, what time does this go up? What time does it go live? What time is your embargo? It's at uh eight AM Pacific. So what's that? Ten? Eleven. 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 Okay. So yeah. That's fine. Tomorrow's a holiday, so I'm not working, so it'll probably be late anyway. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> um but then I'm gonna start with Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Um so I, I finished up the review this morning and I gotta tell you, I don't I don't like particularly like having to review these types of games. Um pre pre release because it's so hard to get consistent like full matches and really experience everything because this is a you know an asymmetrical multiplayer game huh so there Shocking. is no single player i know right uh, there is no like you know single player kind of component to it it's all multiplayer they do utilize bots which is nice um so you know that that's kind of cool but um yeah, so in this case, though, they... they Isn't have, it also, like, like 10 out. fucking players? It is. Yep, I was going to get to that, because this, this is, that's one of the uh, the twists of this, because, you know, most of them is kind of a 4v1 or 1v4, however you want to look at it. Um, this is actually uh, 3v7. So you have seven, um, 
survivors or teenagers, uh, and then you have three clowns, um, which is just like this show. <laughs> wow! <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's uh, it's it's a it, it is a lot of fun. Like I, you know, I said this in the review. I think that this is probably my favorite version of these types of games. Um, it's done by Ilphonic, so the people that did Friday the Thirteenth and Ghostbusters, and I think uh, they did Predator too, um, which all of those are in that asymmetrical, you know, vein. Um, this, I don't want to tell you what else they are. I, oh Lord, this, <laughs> this, um, it feels like the kind of um, culmination of all the stuff, the skills that they kind of learned in those games, <clears throat> and they p- applied it to Killer Clowns because it it plays a lot like. Uh, Friday the 13th, uh, a lot of similarities there in as much as um, the teenagers can fight back, which is nice. Because, you know, in uh, Dead by Daylight, which is Dead by Daylight is really just a glorified game of hide and seek at the end of the day. Um, In this, you, you know, you can you can hide and, you know, Mm -hmm. obviously the clowns are going to try to find you. But the there's weapons around here and you can actually kill the clowns. Like in Friday the 13th, you had to whole go through a whole ritual in order to kill Jason. Like somebody had to die and then get revived as um, the one of the dudes from the movie that put him down and you had to find his shack. It was a whole bunch of stuff. It was neat to put together. But in this, you know, there are baseball bats and kind of, you know, sticks and lead pipes and different things. And you can pummel these clowns, you know, to death. Um, And then they kind of drop down into a stun state and you have to um, hit them one more time (laughs) in the nose. Um, That's their weak spot. So even if you, you know, manage to find a gun, because there's a bunch of different items littered throughout the maps. If you find a gun, you can shoot them in the nose and like that's their weak point. It'll put them down faster and everything. Which y'all seen this movie, right? I'm, I'm oh, sure yeah. y'all have seen mm-hmm. this. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, they it has I mean it has a lot of the stuff um from the movie. Lots of Easter eggs. I mean it it I don't know, it, the the different um kills that the uh the clowns do. Um like the one clown comes to the door that was in the movie, I think they opened a pizza box and another clown like came out of the pizza and like shot the, the kid with the laser or whatever that that's in here is one of the kills. Um the uh the overall objective again like in all these games is obviously the the teens have to escape and the clowns have to kill them all um there are i think five different ways that the teens can escape and each each escape can only um hold x amount of people so like the boat um i think can take out three people then there's like a bridge that will break after two people. And if they go real fast, it only get one. Like you have to go really slow across it. Um, but it'll break after two people goes. And then there's like a portal um, where somebody has to actually be holding the button to to keep it open. And it will allow people to go through. But once he once they let go of the button, they have like seconds where they can jump through to escape before it closes. So it's a bunch <laughs> of different different ways there. I know, man. I'm sorry. It's, I'm almost done. I'm wrapping it up. No, no. I was I'm laughing okay. at that noise. Well, I don't know what that noise was. Well, I don't know. I I didn't even hear the sound. Not like somebody um, like got choked. Was like, <laughs> I didn't hear that at all. I, <laughs> I didn't either. That <laughs> might have been something that ha- happening in your head. I guess, you know, at this point in my life, that's fine. It's fine. I, you know. Um, but I, again, if you like these kind of games, you know what to expect. Um, this, I wrote a review. I ain't going to talk about it forever, but it's, I like it a whole lot. Like I'm pretty excited for Tuesday. Um, when it, I think it's early access, I guess for the, um, yeah, you can buy the big stupid edition and you get early access probably. Yeah. And then it's, so it comes out, uh, for $40. That's the price. thirty nine ninety nine on, I guess, June 2nd. So like the next week. Um, is there enough or, people with like a relevance to this movie for this to like even be a thing? I'm just curious. I do not know. Um, I will say that you know I've only played it with the reviewers and people that have it, and they all of the ones that I've played with <laughs> was like, oh no, I've actually never seen this movie. So I'm like, oh wow, okay, huh? Yeah. All right then. <laughs> like like when when, oh. when the the king slasher <clears throat> can't even, you know, 
remain relevant with a game like this. I just wonder mm-hmm. how many people are going to even care. I'm not saying it's a bad game. Elphonic doesn't really make bad games. It's just... Yeah. You're right. And that is that is really... Um, and I and I think I put that in the review somewhere. That's really my question. I'm going to see how long the player base you know, sticks around. I will say, though, there, aside from Friday 13th, which they had to close because of, you know, licensing stuff, their games, because I've gone back and actually played all of them, people are still playing them. Ghostbusters, you get full matches. I went on PlayStation and played Predator um, the other day, and then that's actually about to jump to the next-gen, well, I guess current-gen systems, because Ilphonic is publishing their own stuff, so it's going to come to Xbox, so that'll probably be reinvigorate that game which oh, that this, game is actually that'll probably fun. like add like four people from xbox <laughs> well you know if they can get on game pass you know oh no, no, no game pass ruins gaming i don't know if you know this oh i did i did read that that is true okay they probably don't want to do that then but uh but yeah so yeah they don't really make bad games but you're right i'm i'm very curious to see how this takes off because yeah like I, it was maybe like two people, and I played hella this weekend of this game. Um, oh, God, I played with the fucking guy. He wasn't on the mic either. One of the f- people from IGN, I ain't gonna put him on blast, but I was like, oh, the fucking IGN guy. And he was like playing with his girl, because like they have the, the same like gamer tag. I was like, oh, he had his girls on here. It's a bitch. I saved him, though, because he got hooked, and I saved him. So. You, you seem to have some real issues with, with somebody over at IGN. God damn. I do, but that's all right. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, it's it it is it's it's definitely it's definitely a fun game, and if you like this type of stuff, you should you should check it out. But um, yeah, we're, we'll see, cause I I just yeah, it was like two people that was like yeah, I've seen the movie, but everybody else was like no, I've never seen the movie. I just like these types of games. I'm like oh, okay, all right, well, it made me feel old too, cause I'm like damn it. That movie was what eighties, <sighs> I think. Eighties, yeah, late eighties, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was a kid kid, I think, when it came out, because I was born in 83, but, you know, still. Um, what else? Oh, I played some uh, uh, Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2. I, I jumped Spider-Man. back in that to finish up some Spider-Man. stuff, because I want to platinum that. That game is still good, but, man, they... Oh, man, them, them, them suits that they got for Miles, where they got his hair out, I don't know <laughs> who... <laughs> I just don't understand <laughs> who okayed that design. <laughs> oh man! It, oh, yeah, it's, but I, it's pretty bad. Lord, um, but I finally, cause I really, I couldn't find a suit that I really liked for him, and I finished the uh, the Mysterio stuff. I told you about it. Yep. And unlocked that suit. That suit is dope. I love the Mysterio suit. Yeah, that whole mission um, chain is awesome. Yes, it is. That that was a lot of fun. Um, so I'm, I'm going around, I finished up the, um, Sandman stuff and I think I'm going around finishing, and I don't know if this culminates in anything, but I'm finishing up the, uh, the symbiote nest and there's something else I need to finish. Oh, the prowler stuff. I don't know if that culminates either, but I I have to finish. Um, I mean, they, they both have rewards associated with finishing them, but. Oh, it's not like a big. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing like, uh. The mysterious. Did you get all the um, the little robots? Oh, that too. Yeah, I'm. I have like. I think I have one more base of that of those that I got to close. I think that that does have a pretty cool little Easter egg reward. Okay. Um, but um, yeah. I mean the the biggest the biggest ones, uh, like I said, to make sure to do are the the flame missions and mm, the Mysterio that. missions. Um, the um. <laughs> The, the the bots have a, a a cool Easter egg, um, and then the other stuff you get. I can't remember what you get. I think maybe just a costume. Costumes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that game is. Uh. Yeah. I'm excited for the for the next, the next one of that. Um. Whichever, whatever it is, whether it be the you know the expansion game or or the full Spider-Man three. Um. What else did I play? Uh, jump back into some uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Tsushima. Actually, because I, I wanted to compare the two, because I didn't actually play Rise of Ronin. I didn't get to play it with like people um, when I reviewed it, and I didn't enjoy the game, so I uninstalled it. 
shortly after the review. <laughs> so I, I reinstalled it to get on there to actually play a multiplayer mission, um, which it's meh. I mean, it's I it it, it, I, it didn't really change my mind on the game, but what I what I ended up paying attention to is the the kind of like the ambiance of everything. So like the wind blowing and the grass flowing and stuff like that. And <clears throat> in comparison to to Ghost of Tsushima, d- Jesus Christ, first of all, the grass and stuff moves way too much in Rise of Ronin when the wind ain't even blowing. Like it I don't know. I, I it's like they tried to evoke that same feeling. Um but it was it was too much, and I think Ghost to Tsushima. I know I'm saying it wrong, but that's because I'm a little I'm a little buzzed. But y'all know. Anyways, um, that game, uh, the wind had a re- like it was a part of the gameplay. Like that right. was what directed you towards you know mission objectives and and stuff like that. Like so it, it, it the grass flowing with it and everything. It it made sense. And this the the grass just moving willy nilly. You like what the hell? Like <laughs> what is it, a Mario game? Like, it's crazy. But, oh, yeah, that game. Ugh. But, yeah. It's, We're having was, another grass crazy. conversation in the year of our Lord 2024. To be fair, though, it, it does. It is a part of the gameplay. Yeah, it, and it's not it in Rise of the Ronin, about. so. Right. It's not. No, it's not. It just, I don't know. It's just weird. Anyways, um, but, yeah, that game is still, I don't know. It's just, it's just not for me. Like, I mean, I played it with two other people, the Rise of Ronin, but it, meh. However, I went on to, you know, Ghost of Tsushima and played, I saw they had a, a new multiplayer thing where um, you are, you don't f- directly fight the other team, but it actually works kind of like the gauntlet mode. And if you're familiar with this in uh, Destiny, so you're fighting, you know, evil spirits or whatever on your side and you have to collect these um, tokens and then offer them up to, to one of the gods, either the sun or the moon. Uh, whichever side you're fighting for and then you can send like enemies to the other team like to delay them so you could send like you know big boss characters if you have enough and different stuff to like mess them up while you're you know banking stuff which was it was kind of neat um but I, I again i enjoy all the multiplayer stuff that they have on on ghost i don't know if y'all even messed with it like the co-op I did, yeah or, yeah oh, okay, I, okay. I liked it for sure mm-hmm. yeah so uh, that is a wonderful game and i can't can't wait for that sequel Oh, oh yeah, same. Um, uh, oh, that was the reason I went back to that too, because I was playing the uh, expansion, the the Icky Island. So I started that off. I'm on the on the island and everything. Did you did you finish that, Ryan? Did you? Finish, I, I, did I did not. I never, I didn't even uh, didn't even play it. Oh, okay, okay. Cause, yeah, right, I because uh, my my ghost was a um, review copy, obviously before the DLC oh. came out. Yeah. And um I never I never went back to it after the DLC came out because I had, you know, other stuff. So Yep. <clears throat> um eventually I'll I'll go back and play it, probably at some point before the sequel, but um I have not played it yet. Okay. It's All right, good. Well, yeah. It is. Yeah, it's, it's a just, little bit that I've played so far. You gotta know what it is. Right. It's it's kind of a Souls game. Oh what? I was about to say, is he gonna tell us what it is? Because I was like, is it just more of the same? No, it's <laughs> it, it's got a little souls to it. The Icky Island stuff. God damn it's it. it's similar to the what was the name of that island in Breath of the Wild? Um, um oh shit. I can't remember the Yeah, name you know what I'm talking about. Like basically they, know, they, yeah. they strip you of everything and it's like, oh here you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Little, oh, little that, yeah, they did do that. Yeah, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, because all I have is like, my yeah, you are starting over, and there's like a ghost of Icky Island that I'm. It's got like the same kind of side quests and stuff that the main one has. That the tales, that's what they're called. Um, which is kind of so I, you know, I guess it's more of the same. But I, you know, that world is just just beautiful. Oh, it's, it's a great game. It. So it's, yeah, it's a wonderful game. Sure. Yeah, I'm I'm stoked for the next one for sure. Um. Let's see. Uh, what else? I man, I know I don't play hell of shit, man. I, let's see. I played some some Cat Quest too. Oh yeah, um, the biggest bangers. Oh yeah, man. I only play. I only play the biggest bangers over here. I play. I play Warhammer Forty Thousand Speed Freaks. God Beta damn, I ain't even that. heard of that one. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I get the pre-release stuff, man. That's that's where I'm at. No, it's uh. <laughs> Tell it me, it's a go kart like, racer. Yeah. Yeah. Like rock and roll racing. 
type of deal. Ooh, so you I'll fucking right play that. Shit. Yeah, but it's in you know, but it's in 3D. It's only the on stage is set. Right the green flag drops. Man, that game was I so love, good. I love rock and roll racing. That's one of oh, my favorite games so of all time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's this is like that, but you're you know the orcs from Warhammer Forty Thousand. So you can build your vehicles, you can add weapons and crazy crushers and stuff on them, and then yeah, this you know racing. It's not bad. It's this is the beta for it. Um, it says that it's going to have crossplay, so I'm assuming it's going to come to consoles when it launches. Um, but uh, they ever make know, a Warhammer fighting game? Am I just not remembering one? Not that I know. I don't, I don't remember one. I mean, that that I'm universe like, seems ripe for like a fucking Smash Brothers or like something. Actually, yeah. you're right. Like, especially when you get into like the real, like the lore of some of these characters, um, the named characters in some of the stories. Like, yeah. And I think yeah, that's like the a, only... Go ahead. They can make like a Soul Calibur style weapons fighting game, I think. pretty. <laughs> cool. As long as it's not like Iron and Blood, we'll be okay. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't count on it not being like Iron and Blood. Oh, dude, that might be the worst fighting game ever made. No. I'm not even being facetious. Like that, that game is. It's not good, but it's not the worst fighting game of dude, all time. Dude, when is the last time you played? It's so bad. Is that? I don't even know if I've played. What was it on? When it, you know. PlayStation is a D and D. It's not as bad as Tattoo Warriors. You mean Tattoo Assassins? Tattoo Assassins, whatever. Oh, it's yeah. worse than Tattoo Assassins. No, by oh, not. oh, hundred percent. I played both recently. It's not. Tattoo Assassins holds no. up a hell of a lot better than fucking Iron and Blood. Oh, I ain't never even heard of Tattoo Assassins. Like what? it was never released. Um. Oh, okay. So the crazy thing is, is it was Data East's Mortal Kombat clone. Mm. You will never guess who designed it. Not in a million years. I could give you a million years to guess. You'd never guess who designed that game. Oh my god. Who designed it? Bob Gale. The Bob writer Gale. of Back to the Future. I was about to say, the Back to the Future? <laughs> yes. Wow. Was that his only I game? Uh, I think so. That's crazy. Okay. It literally has like thousands of fatalities like every character has like 20 or 30 or some shit it's crazy so they just did the kitchen sink approach like this is what kids love we're just going to throw it all in there none of them make any sense like one of them a character like farts turkeys um one of them gets run over by a delorean one of them turns into a hot dog like there's actual nudalities in it it's 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 a weird game man it's wild west back then yeah, that's, that's crazy. You can play it pretty regularly. Like it's it's easily available to play, but it was never released. It was arcade only. Oh huh. yeah, I don't even remember seeing that in the arcade. Because it never happened. Never came out. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm gonna have to. Yeah. I'm gonna oh yeah, you can you can totally play it. Okay. Uh, here's here's the other thing I'm gonna say, and this is probably gonna make Terrence mad, but Iron and Blood is better than that Star Wars fighting game. Wow. Mm. Well, wait. That game is. Oh man. I mean, they're both pretty bad. Mm. I still think Iron and Blood is worse. <laughs> is Iron and Blood a 3D fighter? Yes. Like that's yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh man. I just can't. Right. I can't get it out of my head. When you stab somebody as the goblin, he's like, I don't think I'm gonna have a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, I would have to look that up too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that game is. Woof. Woof. It's got all right. It's got a dwarf in it. It's got a werewolf in it. It's mm-hmm. got a goblin in it. It's got a big executioner guy in it. It's a. Uh, it's like it's like Odd Lot's version of Mace not, the Dark Age. It's definitely not the. But, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's definitely not the best fighting game of all time, but. As a kid, when I played it the first time, I enjoyed it. Oh God, it's so bad, so bad. I'm a, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna check it out. Um, <laughs> speaking of fighting games, I checked out the update, the uh, next gen update for Xenoverse Two, um, because that game is still kicking and growing strong. And you know, I, it dawned on me, and I don't know why I didn't realize this, and maybe I did, I just forgot. But that's that basically is Dragon Ball. It's a Dragon Ball MMO. Um, 
you you make your character like your your own character out of races you go online it has an overarching story where you're like you were pulled out of time and you're working with trunks as a time patroller so you go back and intervene in like pivotal moments like when goku fights um was it raditz the first time um you know because something goes wrong and you're there to fix it but you know it wasn't in the official history or whatever and the different stuff like that but it like you level up you find uh trainers and like piccolo vegeta would they you that's how you earn you know different moves and stuff like that and it's it legit is a dragon ball mmo and i was like that's crazy that's exactly what this is it's, but you know um it looks good plays good 60 frames um so you know good for them i guess keeping that going that game came out in 2016 jesus christ support. yeah yep I think they made a Xenoverse 3 at this point. I don't... That's what everybody thought that um this... What is it? The Budokai game was going to be. Thought it was going to be Xenoverse 3, but they going back to the, you know, to that. So I guess Xenoverse 3 will be in the next two years. Um, Let's see. What else? Uh, I played uh X Defiant <clears throat> came out. Everybody's talking about it's a Call of Duty killer. It's supposed to be like Call of... It's, it's really... Uh, like a mashup of like Call of Duty um, shooting and kind of tactics like gunplay. And then it has the hero uh, abilities and stuff of Overwatch. And even the matches are more uh, hero shooter stuff. So there's, you know, escort where you're doing a payload. They do have actually domination in there. I think it's called something else, um, but from Call of Duty, but it's, you're going to do more of the, um, kind of hero shooter stuff and then all the different characters have abilities and stuff like that so it's i don't know it's not bad they have some issue right now where like the net code is jacked up because you can be shooting at a guy and he moves into cover like you go you know behind the wall and and like he's behind the wall so you're shooting an empty space but the game is still registering that he's there and now you've killed him like somebody like slowed down their gameplay i think it's on twix like to show it and i was like damn that's happened to me and i was pissed as hell like friday night i was like what the fuck is wrong with that guy? <laughs> and then yeah so that that's so yeah so i need to fix that but outside of that it wasn't bad um mess with some diablo 4 remains remains good i cleared the capstone dungeon uh so i'm in i think world level three now where stuff is like way harder like i'm running into stuff at level 50 and i'm the enemies is like 56. I got clapped the other day. I was like, well, I'm going to take a break because, damn. Um, but yeah. And then that's just all I can think of. I'm sure I'll play more stuff, but as always, as y'all talk, I'll, I'll chime in. Oh, okay. Right. Are we? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, I didn't Yeah, well, I'll that. go. I'll go. Um, sure, okay. since, since Ken is not here to tell me to go. Right. Um, after 797 episodes, I, I still get a little uh, disconnected when Ken is not here to tell me to go. Um, so I did not play a bunch of anything, um, but I did play some stuff. So um, I played because it was in Humble Choice this month. Um, I played uh, Bravery and Greed, um, oh, yeah. which is a fun little roguelike. Um, mm -hmm. It's, um, you know, you, you can choose between uh, four playable characters. There's a, there's a rogue, there's a wizard, there's a, uh, like a warrior, and a, um, I think it's an archer. I haven't, I haven't picked the yeah. fourth one. So, um, but it, it reminds me a little bit of like a mix between Rogue Legacy and Goblin Sword. Um, it's it's hard it's hard to describe but it's you know it's kind of a room for room to room roguelike where you're ex you're exploring a map and um uh you can pick up like followers or, or whatever along the way that'll help you so like you might in the in the run I the last run I did you I unlocked a cage that had a um an elf in it and he sort of followed me along and was, was helping me by shooting enemies with a bow. And then I also found a glove that gave me this like um, demonic force that sort of floated above me and, and helped me kill stuff. And then also halfway through the run, I found an injured wolf 
and uh, I saved it with a health potion, and it uh, followed me along and, and helped me kill stuff. Um, but it's fun. I mean, I've been mostly playing as the warrior, so you get a, a pretty good little um, suite of skills. He's got like a shield bash and a, a charging um, like thrust, and then some other some other cool sword moves. So you're not you're not just you know pressing the X button the whole time. Um, it's got some neat bosses. Um, it's uh, it's a lot of fun, especially considering I, it was a throw-in game for me because um, I bought, I picked up Humble Choice for um, uh, Like a Dragon and Hi-Fi Rush and Steel Rising to a lesser extent, um, and uh, I've been having uh, quite a, quite a bit of fun with it. So I definitely recommend that if you have Humble Choice. Um, don't sleep on that. Make sure you claim that code and. Uh, download that at some point and give it a shot because um, it's it's a lot of fun. I think it's on everything, so it might even I don't know if it's on Game Pass, but I I know it's on Xbox. So it um, was on Game Pass at one point. I don't think it's I don't think it's still on there. Got um, it. But it was. But yeah, it's, it is on everything. <clears throat> um, and then I played Traveler's Rest, a uh, decent amount of that. Uh man, I really like that game. Oh, I need to play that. Yeah, that's the one where you run the tavern. Yeah, so you run you run an inn, and um uh it is it's like a mix. So I'm I'm all about mixes today apparently, but it's like a mix between um Stardew Valley and Moonlighter. Yeah, that's the um <laughs> it's um it does by the way I I have found what I'll call some limited combat. Uh, early on in that you can, <laughs> like when you're out, because uh, I, I just now started roaming past my little area where the inn is, mm. and there's a like somebody else's farm, and there's there's uh, like a, an area where there's some uh, some people that have been mining, and one of their people is trapped in ice, so it, it definitely looks like there's going to be a lot more to do than just sort of running the inn. Um, I just haven't quite leveled up enough where I can have other people help me run the inn. So gotcha. until I get to that point, I'm kind of um, stuck. But it it is nice that as um, when when people talk about Stardew Valley as being like their relaxation game, I never understand it because Stardew Valley is stressful as shit to me. <laughs> as much as I love that game, um, there's a lot, and like you can easily have stuff ruined um and run out of energy and like all of that yeah. stuff playing yeah. Stardew Valley. Um and it, it's so like dependent on if you want to find this you have to be here at exactly the right time. Yep. Um yep. and you know that you have to you know you there's so much min maxing I guess in Stardew Valley that it it becomes stressful for me where it's like if you want these crops to perform as well as they can, you need to have this and this, and you need to plant them on these days, you need to harvest them on these days, you need to water them, and, like, there's just so much to manage. This game is so much more chill, uh, at least at this point, than Stardew Valley, um, because the, the, the inn is the way you make money, right? But you can choose when to open it. Um, and closing it doesn't automatically advance you to the next day. So you can, if if you want to go out in the morning and, you know, mine for some ore or plant crops or harvest crops um, or feed animals, you can, you can get a, like a um, chickens and cows and stuff eventually. Mm -hmm. um, or, or, you know, wander around and pick ingredients and stuff. You can do that. Um, and then you, if, let's say you want to do all that until 11 a.m., and then open up the inn for a couple hours so you can make some money. You can do that. You can open up the inn in the middle of the day. Folks will come in. Um, you feed them, you know, whatever food you have. You don't have to worry, um, at least not that I've seen yet. You don't have to worry about anybody coming in and asking for food that you don't have. Um, like they'll they'll ask for whatever you have. You just make less money if you don't have some of the higher end food or, or ales um, on your menu. So you can open up for a couple hours, make a little bit of money, and then close down again and go do whatever you feel like you need to do. Um, 
if you run out of beer, um, you can close the inn down for two straight days if you want and just gather ingredients, make, um, you know, make the ale. The ale has to age. So um, it's basically a three, a four step process to make beer in the game or any, any kind of alcohol in the game. Um, you have to like, um, uh, you know, cultivate a certain, I don't, I don't know anything about beer, but you, you have to <laughs> cultivate this thing and then pair it with this wart that you cultivate in another vat. And then mm-hmm. you put them together in this other vat and it brews the actual alcohol. And then you have to take it into your cellar and store it in a barrel for um, at least 24 hours um, to be able to serve it. And if you store it longer, it ages it and you can actually sell it for more. Um, so it's got sort of that mechanic. It's got a whole mechanic around gaining recipes that you have to kind of stumble on and discover. Um, there's like this, uh, ancient portal that you have to discover and you can go in there and get some recipes and stuff. Um, but it's, it's really a lot of fun. Um, oh, and I, I, I skipped the combat thing I was talking about. So as I was wandering, I saw a turkey. Uh, and I thought, I wonder. So I went over to the turkey and I just started smacking the shit out of it with my mop. The fuck is wrong with died. you? It died. And I got to take its meat and make meat broth. And so I had meat broth on my menu for a couple days um, and made a decent amount of money off of that. So uh, it's, man, it's a lot of fun. And I would say if you like games like that, um, or if you like Stardew Valley or, or any sort of farming, you know, Harvest Moon, Animal Crossing kind of game like that, um, you should definitely check out Traveler's Rest because it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I, yeah, I need to get it because it sounds it's I mean, it's right up your alley. Directly. Yeah, directly up my alley. Oh, that was my question, because I, I like this new um, trend because Fay Farm does this, too, where, <clears throat> you know, you can kind of save when you want like going to bed doesn't like save and end the day or whatever like you have more freedom than that um does this allow you to save anywhere or is it like you only save when you in the day you say you save when you end the day okay yeah so as far as i know you can't save anywhere um i haven't found a a way to do that yet um so you save when you go to bed and it does have the thing like stardew valley where if you stay up too late you'll pass out but it's not until 3 a.m. that you pass oh, out. Nice. Uh, so you have you have more than enough time to do everything you want, especially because eventually you can hire people um, to sort of work at the inn for you and, and serve tables and stuff. Because when you're open, a- until you get to level six, which takes a long time, you are doing everything. So you've got... Um, Folks coming in, and the more you you have to build extra tables, um, so that's where like the ore mining and the chopping down trees and stuff comes in. Is you can make nails and and wood planks and build new tables and stuff for your inn. Um, you also have to manage the lighting. So like, what you're trying to maximize for each customer is what's called a comfort level. And so if you don't have like candles on most of the tables, mm-hmm. um people won't be as comfortable and they'll complain about how they can't see. And if you don't have like, sometimes you'll see a temperature monitor in the bottom of the screen that'll tell you it's cold. So you have to light the like fireplace in your inn. Um, and if you don't, the people will complain that it's too cold in there. If you keep the fireplace on all the time, people will say it's too hot. Um, as people come in and eat and drink, they'll order more, um, so at first, when they get their food, they come up to the bar and you give them their food from there. Some people will come up to the bar and ask for drinks as well, so you can give them their drinks from there. But then once they get back to their table and they're eating, they'll order more drinks. And so you have to pour it, put it on a tray. It, it comes on a tray when you pour it and then run it out to them and give it to them. And if you take too long, they get upset and their comfort level goes down. Um, you have to clean the tables as the people eat so as they eat the tables will get messy and you've got to clean them um they'll make messes on the floor and you have to mop those up with your mop um and you have to manage uh making sure that your 
you know, if, if, if two people in the bar are ordering drinks and one of them wants a water and two of them want beer, let's just say you have to pour two beers, pour a water, have it all on your tray and then run out there and sort of serve people. Um, but the good news is you can level up. And so there's different, different things you can level up. Um, you can level up like your, your, um, crafting, you can level up your recipes, you can level up, level up all that stuff, but you can also level up yourself as an innkeeper. And that makes you like run faster and pour faster and, and that kind of stuff. So you can make it a little bit easier on yourself. But once you get to level six, you can hire people who actually serve for you. So you don't have to run around the restaurant trying to serve everybody. You can hire people, I think, to clean for you too. Um, nice. So it, 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 it lets you at that point sort of expand your in and add more tables because you don't have to worry about running to everybody all at once by yourself. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, man. I, I think especially you, Terrence would really, really get into it. Cause I know you like sort of mm-hmm. sim games like that and it's got, yeah. you know, you can, you can farm, you can um, do all that stuff too. So um, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Definitely recommend it. And it goes on okay. sale, I feel like, a lot of times for, like, 11 bucks or 13 bucks. So it's not very expensive at all. Cool. All right. Um, outside of that, I played some MLB The Show 24. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm really – this game is really weird to me. Um, there's some ways where it feels better than last year's game. But I, I have played this game now for – I don't know, 15 hours, 20 hours. And I've been playing MLB the show. I mean, I've been playing the the MLB games that Sony makes, let me put it that way, since like 95. Um, you play Pennant Race, you mean? Because I think the first MLB was, what, 98? I don't, I don't remember. Wh- whatever the first one was. Um, I think it was 98 because before that, yeah, before that it was pennant race and it was like a one-off. So, all right. So yeah, whatever the first, whatever the first MLB was, I've been playing since then. And this game has the most goofy ass swing timing, uh, of any of these games that I've ever played. I feel like I am out in front or behind way more pitches this year than ever in the past um it's like um and it it doesn't seem consistent so like a pitcher will throw two 93 mile an hour pitches in a row i swing at the exact same time in the animation and i i'm late on one and early on the next uh and it's it's really weird and if it if i wasn't so used to mlb the show I would just chalk it up to, well, you know, I'm, I'm old and I'm not as good at, at picking up on stuff. Uh, but I literally just came off of MLB 23. I was just playing that right before this game launched and had none of the problems with timing as I've had in this game. And I've seen a lot of people online complaining about foul balls and that there's way too many foul balls in this game. And I agree with that, but I think most of it's because the timing's weird. Um, so I don't know what they've broken, um, but it's definitely not the same as last year's game. Uh, it, it's definitely uh, more, much more finicky uh, to the point that like um, if for, for people who haven't played MLB before, you can um, there's a there's an option um, that you can turn on where you can guess pitches. And if you guess a pitch, it basically like locks you in on that pitch. And there's different different levels of that that you can use that have some have better bonuses than others and some lock you in a little bit more than others. But even using the guess pitch that locks you in on the exact location of the pitch, um, I had a situation earlier where I, I guessed the pitch correctly. So it locked my uh, plate coverage indicator on the pitch. I swung with good timing and still fouled the ball off. And that never would happen before. If you were locked in on a pitch with the PCI indicator and you were good or better timing, you were always making contact in the field. Now, 
you might hit it into the outfield and somebody might catch it, right? That happens. But it was never a foul ball with good timing. That doesn't even make sense. Um, so it, it's just, I don't know. It's something about the timing in this game is off. And I hope they find a way to fix it. Because I have I have seen a decent number of people on Twitter complaining about the number of foul balls in the game. And I, I think more than anything, it's because the timing's so goofy. Um, I'm still really enjoying the game, and I've still played a lot of it. Um, but it, it is uh, a little bit frustrating to foul off as many pitches uh, as I have been uh, in this year's game compared to last year's game. Um, outside of that, I picked up um, Space Marine for the Steam Deck since it's on sale right now. And Hell yeah. I, I own it still on Xbox 360, but I don't feel like playing my Xbox 360 copy. So uh, I'm going to go back through that game again in advance of the second game coming out. Um, what else have I played? I'm trying to think if there's anything else that um, I would have played that I haven't already talked about. Um, no, I think that's it. All right. I mean, Hell Helldivers, obviously, but I play Helldivers all the time. So that's not really a, <laughs> that's not worth, really worth talking about. <laughs> All right. So uh, I am actually I am anxious to play this new play with this new Mac that just dropped today. Yeah, I saw that. <clears throat> and people are already bitching about it, but I was <laughs> just about to say that too because I saw the um I'm sorry I was I was drinking some water I saw the uh the Discord and people are already complaining that the I guess the the gunfire or whatever takes too many shots to kill a charger. I didn't read everything, but then I saw somebody else like spamming, like the mechs are actually good. It's a skill issue. You're terrible or whatever. And I was like, wow. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll have to play it myself to see what I think. I think the, um, I think a lot of times people want guns and stratagems and stuff in this game to one shot everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like, that's not, you're 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 playing the wrong game, right? If that's what your expectation is. Now, um, I do think they've gone a little bit overboard with some of the nerfs in the game, and it sounds like they're gonna be uh, reversing several of those. Um, but at the same time, I part of the part of the fun of this game is that you're not like. Uh, an overpowered super soldier that can charge into any situation and just own everything all, you know, immediately. Like yep. that's not the way the game's meant to be played. And it, to me, it would ruin what makes the game as fun as it is. If you could just be confident on hell dive difficulty that you were never going to die and you would just one shot everything like that would completely ruin the game to me. So I agree. Um, I hope that's not the direction that they end up going down with the game, but uh, I have I have confidence in the guy who was formerly the CEO and is now the um, chief creative officer uh, that he will reverse some of the stuff that people have complained about without um, without going too far the other direction. <clears throat> All right, and that's it. Well, I will. Move on here and talk about a couple things. Um, I don't want to go through. Oh, let's see. So we all love Neptunia, right? Oh yeah. So I don't know what that, wait, that's that anime. That's game, the anime right? shit that we joke about every yeah. time. Like you, you got to play a Neptunia game. So they yeah. put one out on Xbox this week, and it showed up in my ID at Xbox game. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna boot this up. Holy shit, this game is so broken. Like, right. during the cutscenes, there's this, like, fucking background image of, like, a level, like, plastered over the character faces. And it just stays there. Um, oh, when you go into the levels, like, geometry just disappears. Mm. Um... It's got one of those 3D cameras where if you tap the right stick, like, it keeps going after you let go. Oh, it's so bad. It's so Jeez. bad. I don't know why people still play these games. 
I don't either. Like, I've never, like, y'all don't talk <laughs> kindly of them. Like, I, I don't understand. Yeah, no, this game is, oh, it's really bad. Um, I played some System Shock, the remake, or sorry, the remaster. Uh, finally hit consoles this week. That game is a lot. I forgot how much that game is. Um, it's very much like playing Tetris with your inventory kind of games where you can pick up literally everything around the world. Um, which I, I, I don't understand. Like, it, it was a novelty, I guess, and they just kept it in. Because, like, the functionality of it makes no sense. Like, you can just pick up human skulls. Like, for for what purpose? Like, you can't sell them. You can't craft with them. Like, I get it was made at a time where everything had to be interactive. Like, you had to be able to flush the toilet, and you had to be able to turn on the sink. Yeah. Like, But, like, some of that stuff now is just like, oh, man, I don't want to navigate this, this crazy inventory thing with a controller. It's just, it's miserable. Um, But the game itself is great. <clears throat> Like visually and and like thematically and stuff, like it's it's just a really good game. If you've never played System Shock, you should totally do that because it's it's inspired so many games today. Um, and of course, it's a night dive jam, so they did an outstanding job bringing this thing back. It's it's really good. <clears throat> I finished uh, Stellar Blade finally. I finally decided to to trek along the. The final mission, which took me about four hours once you go to the the final area. That's because I unlocked the secret area because I'd done so much. Um, goddamn, the, the, the last few bosses in that game, which are contained within the last level, are some of the best in the game. And that final boss is, is fucking epic. That game is so good. I think my final time... Was about thirty-seven hours. Is how much I spent time in that game. Man. <clears throat> yeah. All right. I'm gonna get it. I'm just waiting on the sale. Oh, that I'm, game is so good. It'll it'll definitely be up there on my game of the year. Like I really really enjoyed that game. I didn't end up doing a hundred percent, but I came damn close. Um, and they just put out a boss rush mode and some new outfits and like um. The new game plus, apparently you can get some extra stuff, so I might check that out at some point, but I think right now it's it's gonna go on the back burner. I did I did enjoy it quite a bit. Oh, what else did I play? Uh I can finally talk about Hellblade. If you wanna know anything about Hellblade. Uh I do not Yeah, uh, just talk about Brian, it. Probably. No, I'm just kidding. Go, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Hellblade is it's a great game. And I and I have an asterisk next to the game part. Ah, uh, yeah, it looks like yeah, I, yeah. It is a lot of pushing forward and narrative, and I, I mean, people have nailed it online. Like the the closest like comparison I can give is like the Order, eighteen eighty six. Like, although I think the Order had more combat, like gameplay stuff, but it is very much a lot of move forward. Here's some really like ungodly beautiful visuals like it's it's one of the best looking games it, it is the best looking game i've ever seen like hands down like it's not even close this game is just incredible to look at um the combat is fine um i almost feel like it's a downgrade from the first game in some areas it definitely looks better but i don't know it's it's i guess the best word for it is like it's rote it's just just kind of there um, the puzzles are very one note. Uh, the best puzzle sec- section in the game is where you, and, and you've done this in other games where like you have a torch and you have to figure out how to get the torch to the, cause like if you are in the dark, you inst- like an instant death. Um, but you're in a cave where there's water pouring. So you have to figure out how to get the torch through the holes yep. and all that. Yeah. One of those, like that was the best puzzle section in the game. The rest of the puzzles are like, Line yourself up in this perspective to create a symbol or um yeah, like Assassin's Creed. Yeah, exactly. Like you literally stand on a on a perch and like figure out and then like zoom in and there you go. Uh the other puzzles are like you you hey, figure oh, wait. Out, Yeah. Maybe I did play the first one. Did they do that in the first one? Yes. Where that... you had to like 
move a light source or something to make a symbol or something like that, like a shadow. Like you have to find something in the environment mm-hmm. to like match up with it. Was that? Yeah, you know, that's like, how you, you know, basically okay. it locks a door and then you have to go around and find the symbols to unlock the door. Those are back. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, and then the third puzzle is like the, you have these big bubbles in the air and you like stare at them and they change like the dynamic of the level. So then you, it's like a maze. So you have to figure out which ones to trigger to move forward. It's it's fine. Taking my time and going through the first game, like I was looking for the the size that there's like two collectibles to find. There's these like trees that you can look at that give you dialogue, and then there's these um, like faces in the rocks that if you look through them, you you go through and get a like. Those are the two collectibles. I didn't find all of them, but I found quite a few. I think my time playing through this was like just under seven hours. To finish it, which is fine, like that doesn't bother me. Um, it has a very slow start. Like the first half hour of this game will make it feel like it's like three hours. It's, it's a bad opening. Uh, but once you get past that uh, and you get to the Draugr scene, it's it's really good. Like and it and it doesn't let up from there. Like the rest of the game is good. I just you have to know what it is. Like, it's not a... There's no buttons on the screen. There's no health bars. There's no menus. There's no experience points. There's no weapons. There's no nothing. It doesn't even tell you how to play the game. Like, it just expects you to figure it out. Okay. What are those? Yeah. Like, literally, it never pops up and says, press A to parry or stuff like that. Like, you just need to know how to do it. Um... I think people took it the wrong way when Microsoft like was like, this is our flagship game for the Series X. Like, oh my God, it's going to be like God of War. Like, no. This game is nothing like God of War. <laughs> it's, just, it's really not. Um, the story's good. The performances are good. Like, you just have to know what you're playing. It's, that's the thing about it. Yeah, it seems very much like a, um, and a, I don't know, maybe the... Um... The, the, the timing obviously didn't line up for this, but it seems very much like the kind of game you would want at the launch of a new console as yeah. like a, a show off game. Oh, dude, yeah. if I, I recommend tech off. <clears throat> I recommend you download this game just so you can see it. Like if nothing else, just play the intro and be like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it, it definitely because, you know, every every console has launch games like that, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's just. This game, this is the launch game that exists just so that they can show off what, what the system can do, right? And that's very much what this seems like. It's just coming, you know, four years into the life cycle of the system. Yeah. No, that's that's, that's exactly was. what it is. Wasn't, it, wasn't the Order a launch title that was no. showing off? That, no. I didn't play that. Oh, it wasn't? No, okay. but it's, it, so that's another comparison between those two, because that's what the Order kind of from the out I never played the order but that from the outside looking in that's what it seemed like too like same yeah like a show off game it's, I, I think I remember it's, the complaints I think it's crazy that we're having the the, the 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 length conversation because the order as well was was like five hours yeah I mean game, um, games can be really good and be short I mean yeah. if you play through that that new ratchet that came out you can beat that in six hours yeah sure like I don't, I don't understand where this conversation comes from, and and I think it's because people expected it to be God of War, you know, fifteen, twenty, thirty hours kind of thing. Yeah, I, I, I like a good, um, you know, seven, eight hour game. Yep. Uh, every now and then, it's a good palate cleanser from all the ridiculously long games that I usually play. Uh, so if the if the gameplay is good, I don't, I don't really care if the game is. Six or seven hours. Well, I mean, there's not a whole lot of game playing. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's, yeah, that's kind of the point, I guess. Yeah. Right, that's what it is. Like, it's, yeah. it's, I, I struggle to call it a video game, but at the same time, it, it is a video game. But don't go, 100% don't go in expecting like a, like an action title. Like, you fight one person at a time. Right. Like, the game, is the game's accessibility settings know what you're doing here because you can literally let it fight for you. You don't even have to fight if you don't want to. Oh, wow. Like, you can just turn it on and, and she'll just fight for you. So Okay, well, that's kind of cool. Like, yeah. Huh. 
this game is about the the journey and the story. It's not about gameplay, I guess, for a lack of a better word. Yeah. But it's good. I mean, it's good as long as you like those kind of things. And I think that's it. I did play a couple indie games, but like none of them really stuck out to me, honestly. Um, I just spent so much time playing Stellar Blade and, and making myself miserable in Overwatch, because that's... <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just keep playing it. I don't know why, but... Whatever. All right. Um, let's take a look at. Sorry, I'm keeping my eyes on the weather as well because if, if the show like ends abruptly, it's because somebody's power went out. <laughs> you just it looks yeah, like you just something's close to you, Terrence. Nice. Yeah, you, it did just get dark over here because I'm in the basement. You got a thunderstorm, severe thunderstorm warning. It looks like so. See if we can get through this. Uh, new releases. What's out this week? We've got Adam Wolf, and Killer Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the game which we talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember a little game called Multiverses, but that's coming back out this week. Oh yeah. Um, Capes. Terminal Eighty One. Horizon Chase Two. Humanity. Potion Permit Complete Edition, Umbra Claw, F124, and everybody's favorite, Hypercharge Unboxed. Brother, I'm happy that they finally get in a release. <coughs> really, I'm happy for them. Uh, PlayStation 5, Seed of Life, Sushi Bin, Tevi, um, F124 Champions Edition. Isn't that so that the hypercharged release? Uh, isn't that just it releasing on Xbox? Yes, mm-hmm. it's been out on Switch and PC for a couple years, I believe. Yeah, so they they really they really missed an opportunity to not call the Xbox release hypercharged boxed. Ah, but wow. it would, but it wouldn't have a box, would it? Well, no, but it's on the it's Xbox. On the Xbox hypercharged yeah. Xbox. No, just boxed. Because the regular version is unboxed, right? Because that that made sense because it wasn't on Xbox. Oh, uh, that's fair. Now it's boxed. I played a little bit of Whatever. it. Um, it's fine. I mean, it's not it's not horrible. Like I, I like I said, I have it on Switch. That's I a bought ringing it. endorsement. I mean, it's nah, man. Yeah, you're it's just, it's, you're a oh, fucking yeah. action figure that shoots other action figures in a horde mode. It's fine. Yeah, and that's all. It's it's a horde mode. I think they. I think now. I think. They have like a story and stuff. Oh, you, I haven't played it in forever, but yeah. But then like, dude, what did too much on Twitter or Twix? And then I was like, man, fuck you. And then like, he went into my DMs, and then that was the whole thing. And I'm like, man, fuck wow. this guy. Like, he slid not... into your DMs, huh? Yeah, man. Like, tell us, well, you know, when I talk to Jazz about this, and I'm like, what you name dropping? I don't give a fuck who you know. Like, what? <laughs> what, what? Like, man. <laughs> Like, it was crazy. So, nah, I wish them well, but I, nah. They got my money once. I ain't buying it on Xbox. <laughs> All right. Uh, Nintendo Switch. Ooh. Um, Cat Warrior. Oh, I Am Titan. Ninja Shadow Quest. Airplane Delivery, Delivery Simulator 2024. Realistic Geographical. Okay. That's, that's a title. Uh, Dish Puzzle. All right. Construction simulator. Dish puzzle. Yeah, dish puzzle. You get basically like Tetris with the with dishes. With the dishes, yeah. Get them in the dishwasher. Like Yoshi's Cookie. Oh man, Yoshi's Cookie was the bomb. Uh, Cupid Parasite, sweet and spicy darling. That has to be one of those visual novels. Uh, hidden objects. I shudder to think what it might be. Yeah, I don't. I'm not looking it up. Uh, Hidden Objects Collection 5, Detective Stories, Terror Mansion, Dreamland, Solitaire, Dark Prophecy, Echoes, A Cat and His Boy, Astor, Blade of the Monolith, Burst, Astor? Astor. 
I mean, it's only one S, so at least there's that. Yeah, good, I guess. Uh, Cook Till Escape. Nianzo Kumakichi Escape Game. Ginger the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Goliath Depot. It's right next to the Home Depot. It's where you get your mech parts. Um, yeah. Jelly Battle. Let's throw Street Basketball Basketball Simulator. Uh, Medieval okay. Lords. Might and Magic Clash of Heroes Definitive Edition. Ninja Kamui Shinobi Origins. Uh, One Punch. He Cross S Namco Legendary Edition. Skate Cat. Spellbearers. Stick to the plan. Umbra Wait, hold on. Spellbearers or Spe- Spellbears? Spellbearers. Oh, okay. Not Spellbears. If they had a yeah, Wizard you know Bear what, game, I'd play that. You know what would have helped me Umbers. understand what you were saying in that scenario? If you had spelled bearers. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Juan, Sean Juan Sword Set. There you go. That's the Thank one you, you What else we got here? Nine Nights. Marshall Chi Lang Story. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you say 99 Nights? No, Nine Nights. Oh, I was like, oh, shit. They put 99 Nights on Switch? No, okay, go ahead. I don't All know right. that the Switch could run 99 nights. That's what I was. That was like, how, how, what the hell did they do to it to make it? Might it might be go? able to run like 74 of the 99 nights. <laughs> right. Well, this is nine <laughs> nights, so maybe it only runs nine of the 99. Yeah, nights. there you go. <laughs> yeah. Nine of them. Oh, um, Skeller Boy. Whatever that is, I don't know what that is. All right, me either. That's it. That's that's the week. Be excited, please. Please be excited. All right. Um, to the news. A couple things happened this week. Um, Sony will use AI to shorten translation and dubbing process. Um, from the QA, Sony are talking about AI and gaming. They're talking about raising costs, and AI would help in creating 3D assets, localization, and QA. Okay. Sony's also working on a mobile platform for free-to-play mobile games, according to a new job listing. Huh. Everybody making a mobile store now. It's crazy. Uh, Neil Druckmann talked about AI. Said it was a good thing. Yeah, except he really didn't. Like, did you read? Did you see any of the the conversation afterwards? Well, I was going to get to that. So I, he I also clarify, the yeah. clarification on the comment was that he was going to redefine mainstream perceptions of gaming. He never said that. Mm. Yeah, like the, the it it's like they just made up words. Yeah, and like, they, they must have used AI. Like something he would say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Um, yeah, and he he had a. And listen, I'm no fan of Neil Druckmann, but no, no. Uh, I also am not a fan of people getting words put in their mouth that they didn't actually say. Um, but he came out with a statement afterwards that very gently said, uh, I didn't say that. I don't know where Sony got that. I mean, to be full. to be 100% fair, if you told AI to give us a Neil Druckmann quote, I would believe that That's that... probably the one they would give. Would yeah. Believe, yeah, I yeah. would believe that, yeah. And I, you know, because I think I posted that when I saw that, I was like, this fucking guy. So I apologize because he didn't say that. So, but I did, you know, the fact that I felt like that means that the likelihood of you saying something like that is pretty high. So, but yeah. Um, Astrobot uh, may be announced in the next 15 days. Oh, and it's so. not a PSVR game. I, you know, I have yet to boot up that game. Like I, it's funny. I have it on the PlayStation Five, and I hovered over it the other day. Wait, 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 I was wait. Uninstalling stuff. Wait, yeah, wait, wait. You you haven't played Astrobot on PS Five? No, sir. Get your no, fucking sir. ass off this show <laughs> and go yeah, play that game. You put that bait in this place today. That game is a fucking so, bomb. Yeah, I'm play it. Uh, I did because yeah. I I was going to uninstall it, and I stopped myself. I was like, you know what? They actually have said it's good. I'm I'm gonna check it out, dude. I'm, it was I'm, in my I'm, top ten the year it came out. Yeah, I'm I'm so excited for the concept of a full length game like that. 
PlayStation yeah. 5 teaser game. Astrobot on PS5 is only about, I'd say like three to four hours, but it's so yeah. good. Especially if you have any nostalgia for PlayStation. Yeah. Oh, it's and so I good. do, so yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mess with it. <clears throat> uh, Nintendo is the, the company making acquisitions this week. They acquired Shiver Entertainment from Embracer. Um... Yeah, which wasn't Shiver only making Nintendo stuff anyway? They were porting games, so they ported Hogwarts Legacy and Mortal Kombat 1. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's hard for me to blame them for either one of those, because they're... They're working on the trying to port, yeah. yeah, they're trying to port stuff to a potato with antenna sticking <laughs> out of the top of it, so... Basically. It's a potato with Joy-Cons <laughs> on each side, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're doing the best they can. Uh... Uh, so, Nintendo it'd be, also. It'd be nice if we get a, a new Switch that has PS4 level power and we can see some, you know, PlayStation 4 ports <laughs> to the Switch. Oh, 100%. Right. 100%. Uh, Nintendo's also going to open up a new Nintendo store, this time in San Francisco in 2025. Hmm. According to Jess Corden. Ninja Theory's next project has already been greenlit, and it's not Project Mara. Okay. So probably another Hellblade game. <laughs> I, I'm Project gonna be honest. I, I don't know what you do now. Like I, th- I think this game is done. I don't think they make any more Hellblade. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle and Avowed will be playable for media and content creators at this year's Summer Games Fest, according to a rumor from Insider Gaming. Uh, the first hands-on previews will drop June tenth. Yeah, do you have do you have in the news story the other story about Avowed? Oh, that it moved from Unreal Engine yeah, four to five. To Unreal five point three. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll have to see how that uh, affects things going forward. Unreal they... five doesn't have the best uh, track record so far in terms of. Well, Hellblade two is Unreal five. Yeah. Hellblade 2 also took uh, a year to develop for every hour of gameplay. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll, that's my concern. My concern is not the finished product. It right? is. My it's Obsidian, is though. Like, uh, Obsidian's done well. 100% they have. Like, of all the games, I expect Indiana Jones to be good because Machine Games rarely misses. And I expect I Avowed be to be good because Obsidian rarely misses. So. I just, Fingers I... crossed for both. Yes. <clears throat> what else we got here? Um... I mean, if nothing else, Indiana Jones just looks like a Wolfenstein game with Indiana Jones in it, which is I'm... perfectly yeah. fine with me. <laughs> right. So instead yeah. of just shooting Nazis in the face, you get to whip them. So, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> all the Kingdom Hearts games are coming to Steam, which was hilarious. People were like, it's finally coming to PC. Um, <laughs> no, people coming. hate the Epic Game Store, man. I know, it's, it's so funny. Steam, man, it chill, damn. So bad. Poor Epic. They give... Poor you know Epic? I... No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no, no that's what I was about to say. The only games that I actually have... Oh, because I don't... It ain't, I'm not fucking supporting the store. I don't I mean, I have a PC game for free, but I only get the free ones. Like, I only go on the Epic Store when they're giving... Because they give free games away, like, every week. So like my entire library is full. Hold on, I'm open it up. It's full of all the uh, free games. Free game. How many games yeah. I got? I'm gonna tell you. Let me see. I uh, did that for a while until I realized I'd never played any of them. Some of these, some of these I have played. They get some um, good ones. Out. Oh, there's some good games they, they give away for sure. I just don't play them there. I have 47 games. All of these are free. I have not bought any of these. I got the Outer Worlds. The, the new one, like with the expansion, like all of that, like it's it, yeah, Gigabash. Got the uh, got dying light on here. Like they give away some good stuff. I ain't okay. tried a lot of this, but yeah. We're we're in a smorgasbord of video games. There's no definitely hundred percent. Uh, v Rising has got its PS5 launch date. It's now June eleventh. Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2 launches September 9th. Yep. Warhammer so, 40K Mechanicus 2 is announced for uh, Xbox Series X, PS5, and PC. 
Never even played the first one. I don't know what Mechanicus I, is. I don't know what Mechanicus is. I, it's, so it's on... I didn't play it either. Um, And actually, it's funny because I'm just looking at this now. It's on Xbox on the free play days because the, the Skull thing is going on. Um, yeah. It looks like a tactical game, like uh, XCOM X kind of stuff. I don't know. Okay. I might download it and check it out. Oh, there's my there's our severe thunderstorm watch. We're 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 ramping up, boys. We're getting there. Oh well, yeah, it just got super dark here, so it's it's raining. So yeah, I'm, I must be in the storm. Is where we are. <clears throat> uh, Clock Tower Rewind. Uh, physical pre-orders go on sale May thirty first. What else we got in here? Uh, Grapple Dogs is coming to Xbox. Uh, Grapple Dogs. Huh? Grapple Dogs is actually pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. What I don't know what Grapple Dogs is. It's it's an indie you... game that's kind of like Bionic Commando, uh, but you're okay. a, you're a dog. Oh. oh, okay. It's good. I I played it. I think when it came out on PlayStation, I played it. It's pretty good. Uh, what else is going on? Call of Duty Black Ops Six was confirmed as the redacted shocker. Um, second part of the Xbox showcase. It's Black Ops 6. And it's going to take place during the, uh, the War on Terror, right? It's also going to have 9-11 in it, by the way, from what I heard. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the, the rumor, at least. Yeah. Wait, yeah what? I'm, I'm, I'm really... Let me tell you how uh, confident <laughs> I am in their ability to uh, effectively handle that moment in our nation's history. Yeah. Let me let me tell you how confident I am in their ability to handle that entire moment in our nation's history, not just that day. Yep. Oh, uh, what else we got here? Respawn. Is searching for a new design director with multiplayer FPS experience for its incubation team. Boy, we really reach for them rumors, don't we? Mm-hmm. I, I halfway expect, I halfway expect, uh, like, a, a halfway through the new Call of Duty, your character actually discovers weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, <laughs> and then by the three-quarter mark, one of your supervisors kills you to cover it up. That's the kind of propaganda I expect out of the Call of Duty game. All right. <laughs> Christ. That's, All right. That's probably what's going to happen, too. <laughs> uh, according to Shift Up, Stellar Blade is exceeding expectations. They're already considering a PC port and a sequel. Uh, oh, God. They're currently working on Project Witches, which is a new IP set for release in 2027 on consoles, PC, and mobile. So it doesn't specify PlayStation, but if you remember... When the Project Eve was announced, it was for Xbox and PlayStation. Listen, I just don't know if PC is the place for this game. That's oh, it's absolutely the place for this game because holy Next shit. Mod is going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, already... It, it, I'm going to tell you this right now, Terrence. That game has some camera angles during fights that... Um, Really? The modders oh. are going to have some things for... Oh, man. <laughs> it is It is very clear when you play that game that that director is very horny. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, he's hornier than Itagaki. Uh, I'm just going to say that. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a lot when it hits PC. This is going to be good. Baldur's Gate 3 developer Larian opens its seventh studio in Warsaw, Paul. Jesus Christ. Wow. Jesus, I didn't know they had that many. Oh, they got seven now. Wow. Wait a minute. Baldur's Gate 3, like, this is made by an indie developer. It shows you that indies can be huge. Like, six studios, you ain't no indie. No, they're not an indie. I don't think you're an indie. <laughs> like, at that point... <laughs> Oh, oh man! Uh, rollback netcode is now available for Samurai Showdown on Xbox and PlayStation and PC. Okay. Who's playing that? Like nobody. Nobody's uh, playing that. Is your answer? Uh, Hunt Showdown is dropping Xbox and PS4, Xbox One and PS4 support in August. Players will receive a free upgrade to the Xbox Series and PlayStation Five versions. Mm-hmm. And then as. Uh, Wombat alluded to earlier, Arrowhead hires 
uh, how do you say this? Shams Jor Jorhani? Georgiani? I don't know. Your, your guess is as good as mine. All right. As the new CEO, uh, Johan Pil. How do you say that one? Pilastet. I don't know. Pilastet. Pil Pil or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is taking the role of chief creative officer. So. Yep. The Miyazaki. He's, he's already stated that his um, one of his missions in that role is to make the developers play the game more, so that they. Um, have a better understanding of how everything's actually working in the game. That's good. And aren't just making changes based on what they think is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. Um, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident we're going to get some, some good changes because following him on Twitter, he seems to have his pulse on what people think needs to be fixed. Uh, Miyazaki wants to make another Armored Core. I believe Armored Core 6 was a, was a success. On the other hand, not everything was perfect, and there's still room for improvement. So I have intention. I have no intention of it stopping there. I want to play that, it's too. still on my list. I need to pick it up at some point. Yep, it's on mine, too. I'm just waiting for a big enough price drop or sale, because, yeah, it's, yeah. But I do want to check that out. Uh, Mad Max director George Miller... Um, made a comment that the original Mad Max game wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. And he wanted Kojima to make one. Man, fuck off. That Mad Max game was great. I was about to say, yeah, fuck off. Like, I saw the the stories about that, but I didn't actually read it, so I didn't know that he said that the other one wasn't good. Because, yeah, that Matt, that game is fucking good. Yeah, it's $5 I, right now on PlayStation 2 if you haven't played it. Like, I, I own it on PlayStation it. and Steam, and I haven't played it either place yet. It's really Damn, fucking good. You should play it's good, man. Like yeah, it really is. It good. is a shit ton better than it has any right to be. It is, and it's mm -hmm. if you have it like on Xbox, it's got the frame rate bump too. So. Yep, because I installed it the other day and was going because I actually never actually finished it, um, but I uh, booted it back up and was going. To, it, it's yeah, that game is good. Atari has acquired Intellivision, and cats and dogs are sleeping together. What Crazy to think about. The hell, man! Absolutely crazy to think about. <laughs> Just right. think in what what forty years we can hear about how Microsoft bought PlayStation or some shit. I don't. It's fucking weird. Yep. <laughs> It'll be what it is, too. Uh... Also, I need to have a moment with gamers. So, Outcast and Alone in the Dark apparently failed to meet expectations, but y'all bought South Park Snow Day. Yeah. The mm. fuck is wrong with you? As one who pre or you know who reviewed South Park Snow Day, yeah, the fuck is wrong with y'all? <laughs> Outcast yeah. and Alone in the Dark are two games that I reviewed, and they're very good B tier games. Those games you all say you want, they're both good ones of those. But y'all bought Snow play. Day. Alone in the dark. South Park, man, it sold on brand. And because I, I, I re like that's another game I played. People are still playing that. Like it's full matches going to that. Like then they kind of fixed some of the bugs on there. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's really just a like a dungeon crawl. Well, not even that. Like so, are they adding weekly life. content with the? Not yet. Oh, that's the huh. plan. I Crazy. guess when the new season starts or something. But yeah, you know. I mean, they just released a like a move a, a small movie. Why why is that content mm -hmm. not in there? I know. Yeah, but there's nothing on there. For that. And that's so funny. The end the end of obesity or whatever. I watched that over the weekend. It's really it's really good. I don't I have Paramount Plus part. anymore. So. Uh, Embracer did say that Tomb Raider remastered one through three performed above expectations. That's probably the first time in twenty years someone has said that. <laughs> uh, IGN acquired the Gamer Network family, which included Eurogamer, GameIndustry.biz, VG247, Rock Paper Shotgun, and more. Uh, and immediately laid off a bunch of people. A assholes. Yep. Uh, I did see something funny on Twitter over the weekend, though. That was basically like um, it was another one of these posts about a game not meeting expectations. And somebody said, at what point are we going to go around the industry and fire all the people setting the expectations? Yes, 100%. Speaking of that, Embracer has cut ties with 4,532 developers over the last year and has canceled 80 game projects. Jesus. See? Consolidation. Bad. 
Disney is laying off 14% or around 175 employees of Pixar. And Fragbyte declares bankruptcy for Alara Prime developer Fall Damage Studio only seven months after acquisition. Jesus. Numbers-wise, Little Kitty Big City got played by over a million people on Game Pass. And Ghost of Tsushima surpassed 77 concurrent players on Steam. It has the second highest concurrent players for a Sony title right after. Say Hold it. On. There you go. That's right. <laughs> you think Sony's going to put more games on PC? I think they're going to put more games uh, on PC. Yes, I think so. That's all the news I got. If they're um, smart, they will. Yes. All right, we got some tweets, and we got an email. I got to pull the email up. Um, the title of the email, God, I wish Anthony was here just so I could... <laughs> the title of the email, this comes from Kurt. What up, short legs? Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you could banish one genre from video games, which include core mechanics from that genre infesting other games, what would it be? For me, it would be anything Souls-like. That's an instant deal-breaker whenever a game I was interested in as described as Souls-like or having Souls-like elements. Oh, well, man. I enjoy some Souls-like games. So, man, it's hard for me because I, I feel like I like games in just about every genre. Um, and so as soon as you expand it to also any any elements of that bleeding its way into other games, because I could easily say horror games, like survival horror, but the reality is I loved Bioshock, and that had some survival horror elements in it. Um, I think we just lost Terrence to the store. <laughs> oh, did we? Yeah, he's gone. Oh uh, well, <laughs> Terrence. Terrence has been lost to the storm. <laughs> like this was Fortnite, right? Um, yeah. So I know. I don't know. I guess if you. I guess if you forced me to pick one, I'd say survival horror. I I, I can give you one easy, which is Rogue. Anything Rogue, get the fuck out. Uh, and if you I just legacy. I mean, here's the thing. One game out of a million and a half. Oh yeah, no, I can I, I can live without one. My second one would be cards. Oh yeah, cards cards are a good good call because I would be fine with the elements of that that have made its way into everything else, especially sports games. Yeah, we thought the storm got you, Terrence. Uh, it did, but I, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, my power blinked off, but it came back on. Woo, boy, we're we're like I'm watching the radar. I'm like, man, this is a uh, a little close. <laughs> Yeah, no, it just kicked off and it kicked back off, so we we're good. The impending good. doom is upon us. Uh, do you have a <laughs> do you have a genre that you would get rid of before you got cut out? Um, I'm not gonna lie, I missed the majority because it was like I heard the genre part, but I don't know. I didn't, what, if you could get rid of any, like? if you could get rid of any type of genre like souls like, rogue like, card mm-hmm. stuff like that. That I picked cards and rogue likes. So and and Brian um, said survival horror. <laughs> Oh, dag, I forgot. Yeah, you don't like... I would just get rid of the the Souls-like, honestly. I don't like those. I can deal with even the roguelite stuff, but, like, the Souls ones, no thank you. No thank you. All right, over to the Twitter. We've got a couple here. Um, <clears throat> Astropole says, Final catch, you guys. How is everyone doing? It's been a crazy few weeks in the video game community and industry. Yeah, people are losing their goddamn minds on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know why. Like Jim Cat is still talking Twitter. about Xbox. Like, yeah. still. This dude. I can't I don't... stand this bitch. Oh, we got the right. sound. What well, you didn't do the sound? We sure do. I got right right next to my computer. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that dude. I don't. I don't understand his malfunction. Like I. He just needs attention, I Fucking guess. Fucking 55-year-old man need to get the fuck off of Twitter. For sure. Like, golly. Jesus Christ, these people, man. Like, and you know, if you... Here's here's a little game you can play. If you click on one of his tweets, there's always one dude right under it that looks like Dave Mustaine from Megadeth. 
He's a reply guy. Like, always agreeing me? with him. And if you click on his profile, his, his profile is like, big Xbox and Bethesda fan. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? Nice. <laughs> Just ah, oh, they don't even know what they're doing anymore. Uh, like, dude, oh, if you've got if you've got some kind of corporation fan in your bio, I would we'll stop. stop. Right. <sighs> All right. Uh, John writes and says, "Hey guys, my friends and I have been looking for a medieval fantasy RPG that has co-op, something like Skyrim that's not a mod or an MMO or a Souls like." Sorry all for all the caveats. Does such a game exist? Thanks. This sounds like like some chivalry shit, right? Or no, that's a fighting yeah, game. But, really, that's right? a fighting. more of a. It's yeah, it's like a. It's a PvP game. Yeah, um, multiplayer. But, I was... Um, let's see, co-op. Co-op medieval RPG. fantasy RPG, something like Skyrim. That's not a Souls like. Oh, uh, there is one that actually I think they just announced a sequel to. It's I will warn you, it's it's not easy. Um, it's called Outland. Um. It's uh, you, you're not like a hero or you know whatever character. You're literally like a normal person who is being thrown into these situations. So you have like you have like a adventurous pack, like a backpack on with all your stuff on. Like you got to take your backpack off before you get into combat, or else you can't do like rolls and different stuff like that. So it's like a a real deal like RPG, but um, it it is co-op. Me and my wife played it. Um, and it's actually really good. I I think I backed it on kick Kickstarter. Um, when it came out, and they just announced a sequel not too long ago, or not Outland, it's called uh, Outward. Excuse me, Outward. Outward. Yeah, I, I yes, was gonna say sorry. that sounds like Outward. I own that game. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, my bad. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you like um, it? Did you play that? I haven't played enough of it to say whether I like it or not. If I'm honest. Okay, um, I got you. I, I played like uh, like an hour of it, and I I have it on Steam Deck, so at some point I'll go back to it. But I think you will. I, I, um, I think you will enjoy it. <clears throat> yeah, I mean. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't think of any that are like really hitting all of those points. Um, I, I guess, I mean, chivalry would be or Mordow, um, but again, those are those are like PvP games. So if you're open to PvP games, uh, chivalry's a fucking blast, uh, mm-hmm. and it's not a Souls like. Um, oh, but um, yeah, <laughs> he got he got he got taken out again. He got yanked again. He got man. This thing must be. Whew. The storm got him again. I'm preparing for some power outages today. How about you? Uh, you know what's funny? A knock on wood is power almost never goes out at my house because in my subdivision all of our power lines are underground. Pretty... He's back. So... Oh, oh he's I back. It's gonna. I was literally talking and I got disconnected. I didn't even notice. <laughs> I got kicked out. Man, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> We're just assuming okay. the storm is taking you out right now. That's just it's what. Yeah, I guess so. All right. Okay, I'll stop. I'm done. Yeah. So, uh, chivalry or Mordau are both very similar in their games like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you know, it's another one that's in that genre again. So you'll have to be able to get past the fact that it's PvP is uh, For Honor, which is still well supported. Yes, it uh, is. Surprisingly, I mean, Ubisoft has like these secret games that just like hit like For Honor and. Um... Oh god, what's the other one? It's Rainbow Six. Like Rainbow those, Six like each. those two games are going forever. But yeah. man, my, they can't they can't kid, make a they can't make an Overwatch or a battle uh, Fortnite. Very good. Yeah, my my kid and his friends uh, play Siege all the time. Yeah, like that game is fucking huge. My son and man. his friends do too. Yep, they and they get on uh, For Honor every now and again too. But they. Had they were playing Siege last night. Like, yeah, that, that game has been going for... And it's crazy, too, because that is not even the game that we were promised. Nobody remembers that. Like, we weren't... That game was supposed to have a story and Angela Bassett and somewhere down the line it got turned into fucking multiplayer. Like, I don't even know. Uh, oh, well. I miss the uh, the original Rainbow Six games. Oh, me, me too. too. We used to play Terrorist Hunt, like, all the yes. time. Yes! That was so fun, and I was I just loved that I was always the one like, all right, this room is clear. Bam! Got killed by a shotgun. It is not clear. That all was right, Boogeyman when we played together. What? Really? He just that ran out totally into the me. open, and you just see, poof, he did. Yep. Remember what was oh. the what was the um Ken? What was the Ghost Recon game that we played so much? Was it the original Ghost Recon? Yeah, we when, when Xbox Live first launched. Yeah, we played the yeah. shit out of that game. 
Yeah. You know, back yeah, when we had time. Like really good games. Yeah, yeah, those were good. Man, we played. I remember Rainbow Six, um, Vegas, and Vegas Two. Vegas. Yeah. Those are the. Those. Are remember, the you could put your Vegas. face on the <laughs> your character in Vegas. It's like yeah, even back I then, like, like even back <laughs> then, like it was like a precursor. Like when I scanned my face, I had this horrible hairline. Well, and it was like a. Uh, it looked like you printed out a picture of your face and wrapped it around a tin can. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. And like, oh, we're, I can remember like, like, because it goes into third person when you hug, hug up against the wall. It's like, oh my god, yep. it's me. And then you shoot the face like, oh fuck. <laughs> oh, oh shit. Good tabs. Oh man. Uh, all right. Shogun says I've been traveling a lot this week, and I just discovered using Bluetooth, GeForce Now, and Google Cast. I can play all of my Steam games on the go. Streaming is the future, and I can play them at higher settings than my home PC. It's perfect for turn-based games. Yep. You know how else you can play most of those games on the go? With a Steam Deck. Oh, here we go. This motherfucker's become a Steam Deck commercial. <laughs> it's an awesome piece of hardware. No, no. I, that, everybody who has one says it's freaking awesome, so I don't doubt it. I cannot wait to get mine back, because I guess I want one now. Uh, he also says, so the sequel to the game is more of the previous, but people don't like it. I'm assuming he's referring to Hellblade. Yeah, probably. I don't understand what gamers want. It seems like they're just farming for engagement. I mean, you just answered your question yeah, you right there. Question. Most um, of the people that are bitching about it are just doing that. Uh, the Call of Duty killer, Xbox is dead, gaming enthusiasts are now just as bad as news pundits. What happened to fun? It died. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as, I mean... The 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 pay per click stuff and all that really put a hamper on enthusiast media. But I mean the 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 push towards paying people for engagement on Twitter has ruined all discourse uh, for enthusiast media on Twitter. What was like, it last week? The guy tweeted the rumor about Bloodborne getting a remake, and I think the first comment was rent must be due. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, well, it's like that. You know, I've said it before, but it's it's like that in all the enthusiast communities. The pro wrestling community is the same. It's like somebody posts some hot take for engagement three times a day. What's the uh, new the new um, trend on Twitter? Is like, here's a thread of this and this, and that way you got to click on it to see. Like I, I saw uh, one yesterday. Was like, here's a thread of memes and the real people and what what they look like now. Oh yeah. 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 Yep. So you have to click on it, and then they get paid off of that. And they, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. It's exactly what it is. And then you can't go into any thread on Twitter anymore without the top thirty comments having nothing to do with whatever the post was. Oh yeah. Yep. Like yep. if you see something AI in your generator horseshit, you're interested in what the the tweet was about, and you click on it to see if anybody's answered it. Like you have to scroll yep. like three or four times before you even get to somebody talking about the tweet. Mm-hmm. Yep. Are you, are you gonna pass like thirty-five uh, people promoting their OnlyFans and stuff, and you're like, "What? I, what? Yep. Came to find out about this comic book character? What are you even doing here? Like, it's, I mean, it's you crazy. know what? You know what they're doing there? Either way, you're right. They're you're blurring right. their toes. No, That's no way doing. too much about what they're doing there, unfortunately. Yeah, I was about to say I know too much. That's why Man. my son's not allowed on Twitter. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. <clears throat> Jeremy Residence has just made apple pancakes with eggs and sausage for breakfast. What's your favorite breakfast to make slash eat? Uh, I'm Ooh, that also sounds delicious if I'm honest. <laughs> Dude, is there any meal that's like sounds more or looks more delicious than breakfast? I don't think so. No, no, no absolutely not. It also sounds a lot like diabetes, but you know. Yeah. I'm also probably going to jump back into PS Plus Basic, aka pre PP or PP Lite. Um, just waiting on that sale to kick in. Have a great weekend and thanks for the show. Uh, uh I thought he was. I thought you were talking about you was going to jump back in. No, me. not me. No, God, no. I have basic just so I don't lose my cloud saves. That's about it. I got you. Like I had that premium for two years. I think I played three PS One games. Yeah, it was totally worth it. Mm-hmm. I figured I figured out a better way to play them. So, like Sony, you took too long. 
Uh, Seamus writes and says, This week I fired up my 360. What are your guys' thoughts on the 7th gen of games slash consoles, and how do they compare now? As with many things, it seems like we took a lot for granted, and I realize now it may have been another golden age of gaming as we know it. Yeah, I mean, that, that generation was had a lot of great stuff. It also had a lot of bad stuff that people don't remember, like multiplayer passes and... Dude, you yeah. can still download those with your backwards compatible games on Xbox. <laughs> yes, you can. It was yes, it was also the beginning the beginning of the end as it related to downloadable content and uh, yep, uh, you know microtransactions and and all of that. Uh, yeah, it was there were there were clearly a lot of growing pains as it related online play and uh, storefronts and. And all that stuff. And if you go, so I, I, as I mentioned on the show last week, I went back and was playing Rock Band 2 uh, last weekend and uh, on my original hardware. And um, there's just so much about that original Xbox 360 that you forget about that. Thankfully, they corrected even within the same generation. But like that original Xbox 360 doesn't have HDMI support, um, at least not natively. Nope. Um, doesn't have oh, yeah, uh, doesn't have wireless internet. Um, mm-hmm. natively you had to buy a separate adapter to have wireless internet. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's it's a tough. In some ways, it's a tough. Uh, it's tough to go back to the original hardware. The games have, I think, survived much better uh, than the hardware has from that generation. I think the games from that generation is kind of, and and I know I'll get a lot of flack for this, but I think that's where they kind of peaked graphically. Like sure. Now we get a little more fidelity. We get higher resolutions, but like if you upscale those games, they still look really good. Yeah. So that generation truly was a golden era. I think, I think PS4 was, was good, but it wasn't as good as 360. And I think this gen is just, PS4 and Xbox One on steroids. That's what I think this gen is. Like, I don't feel like there's a defining set of games, and that's partially COVID, partially the fact that people have, like, latched on to these forever games. Like, well, well, partially because they, they, we, we're still, we're still supporting um, the last generation. Well, I mean, what, what was that, that thing came out last week? It was, like, more than 50% of PlayStation users are on PS4? Yeah. Like, what's the... GTA is going to be the first game that's going to get people to jump. Yeah, yeah there's been no reason for anybody to uh, upgrade. No. Like, as good as Spider-Man is, is it really worth a new system? Probably not. Not in this economy. Not a $500 box. Yeah. No. <laughs> Definitely. What was that tweet I sent the other day? Like, the PS1 dropped price, like, four times in three years? Yep. And the PS5 yeah. is now going on four years, has not dropped a dime. In fact, it went well, up. Problem. The problem yep. is these these new consoles, they you can't drop price like that because you they're way too expensive to make. Mm-hmm. To make, yep, they're gonna lose money in that. Like it's oh, it's crazy. We gonna sell a pro this fall? <laughs> Hell no, <nah. laughs> man! If they come out with that pro, like oh, <clears throat> that pro is only gonna serve to cause problems with the fanboy community because Digital Foundry is gonna ruin that. Yep. And, like, it's going to be, what, 5% of people playing video games, if that, are going to have what a PS5 that? Pro? Yeah. That's like it when people holler at you that. about PC gaming. How many people that play on PC do you think, percentage-wise, have a PC that can outdo an Xbox Series X or a PS5? Very few. Exactly. Like, do the Steam chart thing. Like, most people still yeah. running at 1080p with, like, a equivalent of, what, like, a GeForce... 2070 or some shit. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they 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 play games on Steam because they're cheap. Mm-hmm. And everybody who has a Steam Deck is perfectly content with it, and that thing doesn't even match PS5 or fuck, it no, doesn't no, even no. match it's, Series S. Shit. No, it's like a PS4. Yeah. It's basically what like what the new Switch is going to be. Yeah, and the new Switch totally. is going to be bomb, man. It's going to be awesome. I just want to run Tears of the Kingdom at 60 frames a second, and I'll be a happy man. Uh, oh, he just sent another tweet. He said, I was in my 20s when the 360 PS3 Wii came out, uh, and the nostalgia I have for that generation cannot be untied from my life during those days. They seem to 
though at the time, but looking back, it wasn't that bad, and the consoles were part of that for me. Yeah, no, I, I, so again, I agree. The games from that generation were fantastic. I think the hardware, the hardware had a lot more issues than you remember. Um, you know, not, not just the stuff that I already mentioned, but obviously the, the console reliability of the Xbox 360 was terrible. Um, oh God. Yeah. That, that's the thing that I think the, the PS4 slash Xbox one generation of consoles, um, you're right about the benefits they had over the prior generation being limited in terms of the games themselves. But the biggest, the biggest difference between those consoles and the consoles that came before them is reliability. Um, also, like we the, forget, the, we forget how bad the XMB was. Oof. Yeah. yeah. No, it was bad. Um, well, and, and you know, not only that, but everybody, there were, there were so many, and it's good because it was innovative, but everybody was trying their motion control gimmick and uh, connect and, you know, all of the, the PlayStation I and all of that stuff. Um, all the, the peripherals um, that were just rampant. Um, it was a it, it's a it's a it's a I think sometimes we take for granted how good we have it on the hardware side right now. Um and it's it's easy, I think, to take it for granted because the um we're not getting we're not getting the sort of breadth and depth of, of games that we used to get, which obviously is the most important thing. So Yeah, he just tweeted in again, kinda of in that point. He says the games generally speaking seem to be more about fun and also seem to express the more artistic side of game creation now versus the business side now uh, of the industry seems to have shown itself to a greater degree, which is a hundred percent. Everybody's um, trying to make, accurate. yeah, they're yep. trying to make that big game. Yep. And you know, the 360 era brought a shit like fucking wet. <laughs> like, right. Like right. Bethesda would never make another wet today. No way. No. And they just proved For that because the, they fired the, sabot- the saboteur. The saboteur. The yeah. Was oh, like, that game is so good. I just bought that on uh, GOG. Like 3, 360 brought us fucking Mirror's Edge and Dead Space and like these really quirky games that just would flop now. Yeah. And they do flop. Like Callisto yeah. Protocol flopped. You know, Immortals of Avium flopped. Those are games that you would have seen during the 360 era that you see now and they just yeah. flop. Yeah, imagine a game like Cameo launching today. Oh god, it would get destroyed. Unless it was on Nintendo. Nintendo would do bangers. Like, yep. Nintendo's audience is just a different breed, man. Yeah. All right. Um, that's all I have. Um, I will plug again. As I said, I will continue to plug. Get your 20% code on eWin Racing. Get your chair, man. If you need a new chair. Still rocking mine. I'll do my review this week. I also have some headsets I have to review, which is always fun. Oh, he tweeted again. I'm just going to keep going, man. Don't get me wrong. I still enjoy games today as well. It doesn't seem... It doesn't something seem just different that can't be chalked up to age. Also, any recommend, recommendations for 360 PS3 games stuck on the digital marketplaces? Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah, man. I mean... Um, the uh, to, to To his point about something feeling different, it, it absolutely is different. And the, the difference is that as soon as uh as soon as private equity and uh you know your 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 big movers and shakers noticed gaming as a massive opportunity um that's when you started seeing all the industry consolidation and the the um the spending and the costs and everything dramatically increasing um, and the the real emphasis on microtransactions to try to make back this ridiculous expenditures, um, yeah, I mean it's the what what changed, unfortunately, is that games got a lot more popular during the 360 Wii PlayStation 3 era, and with that came all the people who wanted to chase them for money. Yep. And as soon as the people who wanted to chase them for money invaded the industry. It was the end of all the stuff that Ken was talking about with respect to artistic expression and taking chances on smaller games and all of that because it stopped being about the art of games and started being about how do we line our pockets as much as possible to justify the cost 
Um, and yeah, we lost something for sure. That's been the case of the world in the last 20 years. We've, we've lost a lot of things to that. I mean, look at the movie industry. Breed. Yeah. Yeah. Film industry is a great example. I mean, we, we had that like MCU like boom and then man, it just died. Yeah. I don't know. It's a, it's a sad time. And then like, you'll get people say like, you know, the indies are, are carrying that weight. I'm like, some of them do well, but anybody who has one of these new consoles and goes on these digital storefronts know that they're fucking trash. There is so much garbage just littered in those stores that, that bury yeah. the good games. Yeah, they really need to bring back like the Nintendo Sela quality. Or get somebody just to curate yeah. these stores, man. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, watching Jonathan Blow not find his game was, was forever. <laughs> man, I thought that, that was so that was funny. funny. Like, bro, what, you, first of all, you're searching bestsellers. It just came out. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Man yeah. clearly did not figure out the puzzle. Yeah. Anyway, well, we made it. Uh, Terrence got kicked off only a couple, a couple times. Of, uh, yeah, only a couple of uh, disconnects. But, yeah, I'm looking at the radar right now. You're, uh, you got a big old orange blob headed at your way right now. So. Mm. And you know what the worst part is? This is just round one of two for today. Yay. Yeah, no, God. But anyway, um, I think that's it. If you want to send us an email, it's podcast at ztgd.com. If you want to tweet at us, it's at ZTGD Radio on the Twitter, which, by the way, he changed the URL. You can no longer get there from twitter.com. Just oh, auto- is it X now? It automatically redirects to x.com. So. <sighs> nice. He's awesome. trying to force it, man, and it's no, I will never call it X, ever. Mm-mm. Such a stupid, like right there is your business sense. Like one of the most recognizable names in the world and you change it. Yeah, they, yeah. they added tweet to the dictionary and he got rid of it in exchange for post. Right. Post like, is like so generic. Like, right. Repost. No, I retweeted it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's it for this week. We'll be back next week, hopefully. Um, until then. Play some games. Quit bitching on Twitter. Peace, bitches. Alrighty. And it goes something like this. <laughs>